If anything needs to be changed, maybe even programming the traffic light, we can have that incorporated into phase two. Very rarely do you get an opportunity to test drive your stadium and the activities that go on. So they will be monitoring the activity of the games that are going to be the four additional games. And if there's any issues that need to be dealt with, we'll be asked to deal with them as part of phase two. Now we also have a number of other teams who play on Helmet Field. How disruptive is this construction process going to be to their seasons? Some of them are now, obviously, and some are in the fall. Where we, we will be working out, outboard of the fence that surrounds the track. Public attendance in what was the bleacher or is the bleacher area now is going to be what's affected. We won't have room during the full blown construction for uh, spectators during those, you know, over the, the summer and fall to get these in. So we, we will not have any impact on the actual activity itself, but spectators could be restricted to, I don't know, we can pick areas on the track and just put down some protective sheeting so that they can still attend. But for the most part, we're outboard of the activities, the, the sports fields themselves. And that will impact the fall, but not the spring, presumably, or both? both. Fall only. Okay. Other questions from board members? <coughs> if not, public comment on this issue. Same rules as before. Mrs. Herring. As a parent, oh, sorry, do I need to announce to I know you well, but I think <laughs> Diane Perrin, yes. Hilltown Township. Um, having attended um, many, many home football games at Papa Yoder, I heard some very disconcerting items tonight. And for those of you who don't regularly attend, um, it deeply troubles me that we are building a stadium, whether temporary or permanent, that we cannot put an ambulance up there on. That is beyond my comprehension that we would even discuss doing this and playing a sport of any kind without having the ability to get a student or a injured adult down off the field with proper medical care. I understand phase two, but to have not planned this into phase one is nothing but short-sighted. It is neglect on those kids. To not have thought of the fact that we have no ability to have bathrooms. I am still trying to figure out, since no one has made these plans public, how exactly you're going to get someone in a wheelchair from the top of those stands down to this building or to the building next door should they need an ADA compliant bathroom. And I'm sorry, but an ADA compliant porta potty, if you've ever seen it, it is completely impractical <coughs> for anyone who needs assistance. There is absolutely no room for a second person to help someone in a wheelchair. I have not heard anything related to other than how we're going to test a sound system. No one has stated where we're getting a sound system from. Because there isn't one up there now, and if you strip it out of Poppy Odor, and then you plan on playing at Poppy Odor, you don't have one there then. No one has accounted for the lost revenue to the class of 2016. Who doesn't get to run the concession stand and loses thousands of dollars for their prom. No one has mentioned that. No one has mentioned during the game, during halftime, where the teams are expected to go. Because the only locker rooms are all the way down there in the dark. And there is no walkway. So without a team room up there, I'd like to know what the practical logistical plan is for that. Because that's injury written all over it. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Hi, Clara Steinberg, East Rockville Township. I have three questions. Um, you said you're going to have a walkway to the seating, but not to the concession stand or the bathrooms? Mr. can you uh, respond to that? You said you're going to do a walkway in phase one from the existing 
sidewalk up to the seating area. So how is somebody in a wheelchair going to get from the seating to the bathroom with that walkway? Dr. I mean, last time we did this, uh, Dr. Radikin compiled all the questions and then we answered them at the end of the public comment. Are we going to do the same thing now? We could. Okay. Yes. So, yes, if you would give us the other questions and we will try to answer them. Okay. Um, why, why a separate press box and a video stand? Would it be cheaper to put the video stand on top of the press box like all the other high schools? And if you remove the the uh, bleachers, or you said you're just going to have the bleachers up there for, for football games? What about all the, all, the, also all the other sports that play up there? If the spectators are going to have no place to stand or not allowed to go? I think I just, just, Mr. Spadafore already answered that question, <coughs> basically saying that there would be no impact this spring, so they would have the same facilities that they currently have for all the other sports. I'm talking about the fall. The fall. The fall. Well, the bleachers are, in theory, going to be installed by September 26th, so there would be a short period, presumably in September, when there would not be bleachers, and they believe what I heard was that we would accommodate spectators on the track with coverage to prevent damage to the track. Okay. Have I understood his comments correctly? Okay. And the sidewalk going from the existing sidewalk to the bleachers, where is that going? Is that going on the outside of the fence all the way around to the right or to the left or let us answer all those questions. More? No, I think. All right. Thank you. Mr. Lim. <coughs> Robert Linden, West Rock Hill Township. Uh, I have a comment. It would have been appropriate to the public if if it had been given an overview of what the bid included and how it compared with Dr. Radigan's uh, uh, proposal. So I, I listened to the, some of the questions you asked, and, and it's like you didn't understand what was in the bid either. So when you just come up and say 1.47 million, and the public has no idea of what that means, what that includes, what it doesn't include. And I think it would, been, would have been appropriate for you to do that. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? If not, all right, let's go back to this issue. Mr. Casper, do you want to state once again or redefine the motion as you uh, wish to place it on the table? Well, he can. No. No. Oh. Okay. It was not seconded. That's why I'm asking whether he wants to amend it or if he wants it as as originally stated. Well, I'm not the solicitor, but the, yeah. the, the solicitor is here. The change that I thought might be, if we're accepting the base bit, and uh, that I was I was um, of the opinion that the the bid the motion's reference to the dollar amount was sufficient to identify what you're. Okay, that was my piece. Same thing. Mrs. Cron said it was second. It was oh, second. Mr. Yeah. Rigo? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. So, that, right. so the motion is standing? The motion is standing, right? Okay. Yes. It's okay? And the motion was fine, in my opinion. Okay. That's all I have. Mr. Debbie, come on. Any other comments from board members? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Are, can we go through any of the possible to answer some of the questions that were asked? Entirely, answer? yes. Can you um, rejoin us at the podium and answer as many of those questions as you can for us? Would you mind asking the questions? <laughs> <laughs> the sidewalk, if I may, the sidewalk, I think, the people are talking and are thinking is there's a sidewalk. You know, the sidewalk is, is going to be along the track to the bleachers. Is that right? That, that's what I'm thinking. Sidewalks. There's no new sidewalks going up to, this, to the field, well, the, and there's, the, there's the no new ADA ramp going up there because we already have it. We have an existing right. sidewalk and ramp that go from the parking lot up to the sports facility. The new walk paths will be in front of the new bleachers. It will run parallel with the track, the straightaways on the track. When you get to the top of the, side, the existing sidewalk, you will have ADA accessibility, meaning you can roll a chair, or if your crutches or whatever impairment may be, 
when you have a hard surface, whether it's the track or the pavement, to get from the sidewalk to your ADA seat. There is accessibility. The ADA uh, temporary toilets will be immediately adjacent to the sidewalks to make them as accommodating as possible as opposed to none that are there now. Uh, in response to the ambulance, the ambulance will absolutely be up at sports side. We'll be using the rear lot on the other side of the tennis court. It's not that we, we haven't made the permanent place for where the, the ambulance would be in phase two, but we do have a place to put the ambulance to accommodate it for these four ambulances. I mean, I'm sure they do that. They must have ambulance there now. Whatever they're, whatever they're doing. Right, whatever they're doing now, we will continue to do until the, the permanent complex is done. They don't have. So how I don't understand how we're making it. Anyway, um, your to answer your your press box. Yeah. <coughs> what, what's your question, please, Mrs. Hannah? No, I'm just absorbing because if you're not familiar with what goes on now, and you put the proposal together for what we're doing in the future, and you're banking on what we're doing now, and you don't even know what we do now, that's frightening. Right. Can we continue with the meeting, uh, Mr. Spadafora? Would you please respond to the questions that were asked? The uh, the press box, we do have a platform on top of the press box on the home side. There is also a camera platform that's going to be on the other side for the visiting team to be able to video their own game. Their game. It's they can't use the top of ours. Typically, no. Why? It, it's there for their use. I mean, we the facilities for press boxes. I'm, I'm sure they could, but we're, they're given the opportunity to have their own set up on their side. Even for us, we can also set up um, use on their side. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I'm a band parent, so when I go, I always use the other fields video area mm -hmm. because the bands face the home side, not the visitor side. So if a visitor is going to video. Say the band, they're only going to get the back side. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know if everybody wants to video the rear. No, I'm, 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 I'm sure that like they, either school could use either platform, depending on what the situation or I'm just wondering why, why the extra expense if they can. It's not an extra expense up. for the platform. It's either you it's have seating. You either have seating there or you have the platform. It's the same planking. One is lower than the other one. It's not an extra with the platform. It's the same height as the seats. It's not another box, press box. It's just a oh, platform. Okay. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. I don't know, it's hard to tell Are there other questions that you could respond to? I don't wear it. I think that was it. Okay. Uh, Dr. Radigan, I believe you have an answer to at least one of the questions. Thank you. Right. One of the concerns raised was the concession stands and the class of 2016. Just to let you know, myself, Mrs. Johnson, Dr. Creedon, Mrs. Girantana, anybody else in that meeting, Mrs. Johnson, we met on this very issue because we realized that it's important to them to raise money for their proms, etc. So we have a tentative plan in place where we will actually be using the high school lobby uh, as a place of selling the concession items, and also we're going to have students go out to the stands just like you would at a, like a Phillies game, or maybe they're going to wear, you know, the, the packs on top and carry the drinks. So those who don't want to come in, we can accommodate them out there. So we have thought about that because we know that's an important issue for the students. Mr. Deming, you had a question. Yes. I'd like uh, I'd like your opinion on how the ADA temporary first day up here compares to what exists now in popular. I have an impression that there is no comparison. Is that right? That's correct. I think you ought to state that. I mean, you were very, very, your organization said that Poppy Yoder does not comply with ADA requirements, not only in terms of ramp space and access up into the stands, I'm assuming also in terms of uh, restroom facilities. Is that true? That's correct. So making the comparison, he's trying to like compare apples and oranges, is that fair? Okay. I would point out that no matter what 
choice is made tonight or has been made in the past that there is going to be dislocation for this fall's football season. I think uh, that's a given, and uh, it will require, I believe, a certain degree of accommodation on the part of the administration and on the part of our fans and students and coaches in order to make this a success. So, uh, and I think that's true no matter where we play or where we would have played. It's just um, once you start down this road, it's going to be disruptive, just like this high school project was disruptive when we were building it. Uh, I think if you ask uh, Mr. Creedon or any of the people who lived through that experience, they wouldn't be terribly positive about it, but the outcome was a good one, even though it took longer than we had all hoped. So, at this point, I'd like to call the question and take a vote on this. So, all those in favor of the, well, let's restate the motion. The motion is to approve the base bid of $1.475 million. This will include purchase of bleachers, footers, walkways around the stadium, uh, some electrical work, uh, relocation of a water line, um, some site work to um, create erosion control and stormwater piping, a press box and a cap tower on the opposite side. Have I missed anything, Mr. Smith? Or thank you. Uh, so that's that's what's included in the bid that we are accepting. There were four bids. This is the <coughs> lowest bid as we are required, the lowest acceptable bidder. And I'd like to add that uh, presumably this is obviously contingent upon the approval of the solicitor as to the criteria, as we always do with bids. They they need to be. Uh, need to determine that these individuals have the bond issues, whatever is required to fulfill the requirements of, of the bid. So at this point, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Motion carries 6 2. Um, Mrs. Miller. Yes. Um, Mrs. Cron, could you include that, that um, motion as Peter read it in the minutes? Thank you. I appreciate that. I am in favor of 5,000 seats, but I feel like I needed to see, you know, a, a comparison, as uh, Mrs. Miller said, with Dr. Radigan's uh, original proposal. And I made some phone calls today, and, um, you know, I, just, I feel like we didn't get all, you know, I, I didn't have enough information to vote in favor. So while I am in favor of building bleachers at the at Hellman Field, and I'm in favor of 5,000 seats, I feel like in order to vote tonight, I needed more information. Okay, thank you. The next facility yes, committee uh, meeting is scheduled for May 7th here in the district office. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, finance committee, Mr. Sardis. Thank you, Dr. Aaron. Now, uh, the Finance Committee was meeting was also held on April 8th as part of that joint meeting. Um, so I have, uh, that was our normal business meeting, so I have several motions uh, to approve. The first is a motion to authorize nutritional services to apply for grants as presented on April 8th, 2014, which are the Team Nutrition Mini Grants and USDA Farm to School Grant. So I'm a second to that. Motion. Second. Moved by Mr. Sarnis and seconded by Mr. Mergomo, sorry, uh, to approve this uh, or authorize the nutritional services to apply for grants. Comments or questions from board members? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8 0. Next, Mr. Sarnis. The next is a motion to approve the contracts as listed below, letters A through M. Do we have a second to the motion to approve contracts? Second. Moved by Mr. Sarnese, seconded by Mrs. Miller to approve the contracts. Comments or questions from board members? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8 0. Mr. Sarnese. The next is a motion to approve approve repository sale number 15032-019 for $500. Do I have a second to that? 
moved by Mr. Sarnese and seconded by Mr. Deming to approve the depository sale. Oh. Okay. Um, Mrs. Johnson or Mr. Sarnese, I hear <laughs> comments, so I presume we uh, are having second thoughts or changing our mind. Well, it, uh, I think we we talked about this in the. Um, Hmm? Oh, this is a different one. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so there's a motion and a second on the floor. Can you explain that for board members so that there is no confusion what you're asking board to All right, what, uh, I'll let Mrs. Johnson explain it. If you have to. Yes. In your board packet, you did receive a copy of the letter from the County of Bucks explaining um, the repository sale. This particular um, property um, has a um, assessed value of $10,000. It does have a um, approximate sale um, value of around $90,000. And this individual has placed a bid of $500 for this. Um, so the bid is less than the taxes that would be collected on this property. Um, you did have one of these before, and you did not approve the, the sale. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention in case you didn't read the um, memo in full. So the administration's recommendation is to, to vote no on the motion as it's made. Okay. Any other comments or questions for board members? Thank you for reminding me. I voted wrong the last time. <laughs> not to do over two. Um, if not all those in favor, all those opposed, nay. nay. Motion fails, zero to eight. <coughs> Mr. Sarnese? The next is a motion to approve IDA section 619 use of funds agreement for 2013-14 funds of $2,667. Do we have a second? Moved by Mr. Sarnese and seconded by Mrs. Schmidt to approve the IDA funds. Funds agreement. Comments or questions from board members? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries 8 0. Mr. Sarnese? Next is a motion to authorize the administration to complete payment in lieu of tax application for payment. Do I have a second to that motion? Everybody's afraid now. Thank you, sir. Yes, yeah. thank you, Mr. Casper. <laughs> Moved by Mr. Sarnese and seconded by Mr. Casper to approve the motion. I hate to even try to read this. This is this sounds very, it sounds like educational gobbledygook to me, but uh, Mrs. Johnson, can you give us a, a very, I apologize, I was not there for the meeting when this was discussed. I would like to have a brief um, overview. Yes, this is the annual um, payment in lieu of taxes that we do receive from the state for the state game lands that are in the, the district. We do have to apply for those um, annually, and this is the time of year that we do that. Any other comments or questions from board members? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Mr. Sarnese? And the final motion is to accept the proposal from Mallory LLP to serve as independent accountants for the years ending June 30th, 2014, 2015, and 2016 at a cost of $20,500 annually. We have a second to that motion. Second. Moved by... Mr. Sarnese, seconded by Mr. Rigoma. Thank you. Um, to approve the services of Mallory LLP as independent accountants. Comments or questions from board members? If not, I, should, I would like to note that this is actually a reduction in cost from our current cost. Uh, this was put out uh, as an RFP, and uh, this particular uh, group came in significantly lower than other people on that list. So any other comments or questions from board members? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Mr. Sarnese? Uh, we have two finance committee meetings scheduled. Uh, April 30th, and uh, that will be a, a budget meeting only. Um, just to remind, what we're going to attempt to do at that meeting is try to bring everything together um, answer questions, uh, there'll be no presentation, so it, it's really an open 
discussion for board members. Um, we're going to try to get, uh, we will have more detail that some of the board members requested uh, to go over comparisons to prior uh, years and to prior year's budget. So um, that's what that meeting will be on May 7th. Uh, it will be our regular business type meeting plus hopefully uh, we will vote as a uh, we will have another budget discussion and then go to a special board meeting, to, as Dr. Yar now said, to vote on a proposed final budget. Thank you. Uh, the intermediate unit, Mrs. Miller. Thank you. The IU met on April 15th at the IU. Uh, various contracts, agreements, payments, purchases, as well as personnel items were discussed and voted on. April is Autism Awareness Month, and a presentation, short video, and handouts were provided to the board. One of the methodologies used in the classrooms is the competent learner model, which is designed to develop skills encouraging independence in the school and in community settings. Bridges Virtual, the IU's online learning program, runs an innovative summer program that provides online course opportunities for middle and high school students. The course catalog of core and elective courses meets the needs of students who require credit toward graduation and students looking to accelerate their learning through enrichment and initial credit offerings. The summer program is meant to help districts deliver high quality learning opportunities in lieu of a traditional face-to-face -face program or in support of a tr traditional summer program. It may also be helpful in providing keystone remedial and preparation uh, opportunities. The Reading Olympics was held in April, which is designed to encourage students to read more books, read a greater variety of books, and share what they have read. This year, 372 teams with approximately 5,200 students are expected to read 55,000 books. Quite a great accomplishment. A resolution was developed and approved for submission to Harrisburg, urging them to lift the restrictions and allow the medical assistance funding to flow to school districts and I use to support the services for students with disabilities. Uh, if you recall, Dr. Phillips discussed this dramatic loss of funds to Penridge. Um, if I look over, it was almost $800,000 loss in the last two years. So um, if you would like a copy of the resolution to submit um, from Penridge, I would like to get your copy. Uh, a reminder of the May 10 Run, Walk, and Roll Together for Kids fundraisers, which includes one mile and 5K events. Sponsorship opportunities are available. Uh, please see me for details if you're interested. Thank you, Dr. Uh, the next meeting is probably on the schedule here. Um, is May 20th, 2014. That'd be all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next issue is personnel committee, and that's Mr. Deming. I find it interesting, by the way, before we get into this, that uh, you have to vote on the motion even if you want to kill it. But that's why. That's why I seconded the bill. Okay. Uh, we had a uh, personnel executive. Meeting um, on April 7th. We discussed a number of things, but tonight we've got two motions. Motion one is to approve a secretary student accounting job description, and we have this. I won't go through that. So I'm going to include that along with the motion to approve the secretary job description, the second one. And so I'd like a second on those two motions. One, two. We have a second to the motions. Second. Moved by Mr. Deming, seconded by Mrs. Yardley to approve the job descriptions, one for the secretary student and accounting job and the other for the secretary student registration job. Comments or questions from board members? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. And our next personnel meeting is uh, going to be scheduled uh, for June 12th. Dwayne. Motion. Wait, we had one more. I'm sorry. Is there a motion? Floating around. This is the, uh, yes, I'm sorry. I don't have that one. It's on the facilities. I didn't get the second one. It was added. This is the new business one? No, not the new business one. There's a third one, which is a motion to a... Approve the compensation for the sound and lighting systems operation as discussed at this executive session and alluded to here by two of the students this time. Um, I'd like a second to that motion. Second. 
moved by Mr. Deming, seconded by Mrs. Miller, to approve the revised uh, compensation for student lighting and sound uh, individuals. We have comments or questions from board members. Mrs. Yarden. Yeah, I have a question. Um, this is to be going forward, isn't that correct? It's not to, it, it's not, is it changing the current pay, or is it just moving forward with going, new hires? Going forward from tonight. From the new hire, so people who have already had their pay approved, that's not changing. Right. Okay. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't affect the two students that are here tonight. It wouldn't affect anything at the last meeting because you voted to approve right. the pay at the last meeting. This is going forward if you approve this tonight. Okay. So, wait, so now, now I'm confused. Okay. Any student who performs this function? beyond tonight, even those who are already employed, have already been employed, or only students who are new to the job and have never been employed? This is for moving forward, if a student has had 50 plus hours, which I think both these gentlemen here were supposed to go, uh, as they explained tonight, they would make the $23 an hour. Okay. So they, once they earn their hours, they keep their hours. Uh, so it's not even a grandfather, it's just they, if, they've earned, if they've been trained with uh, 50, they get 23. If they have 20 plus, they get 19. And if they are brand new, then they get 15. But we do not have a, we did not have a pay scale to pay them. Now we have a scale. Is that understood? Do, do we have any other questions or comments from board members? Mr. Rigomo, you look only slightly puzzled. Well, I just want it's not it's not going to regress back to zero. No, because you already approved the payment for the, uh, the last time for this people. Okay, so it's not starting over a year next year. Or no, nor is it you know subject to the whim of the board if it comes up what you're going to pay them. This is what you're going to pay students unless you change the scale. Thank you. Mrs. Yarder, we never had a scale. We never had a schedule at all. No, we did not. A number was given to a number was given to the board and you either approved it or not approved it. Now you have something that the high school presents to you say you can do this. These, this is the opportunity for you to get paid at a higher level by volunteer. And, and again, I would like to prove that we'll be posted on the website so, yes, so, so parents and students have access. Posted at the high school website, the high school is to be responsible for keeping track of ours. Right. It's to turn it over to them. Mr. Yeah, Daniel, my understanding is these monies come from people not from people who rent the auditorium to pay these students employees. You That's know my understanding. Except for the board. Except for the board. board. And I'll utilize that, sir. And I'll request your talent. And I'll have to talk to Dr. Creed about that. Have sometimes that gets rolled in as volunteer service. So we'll get that clarified. It's $600 a year for them. All right, are we ready to vote on this <laughs> motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Mr. Deming? Okay, uh, policy review. I have one motion, which is to recommend the second reading and approval of the policy number 903, which is posted on our website, which had to do with public participation in board meetings. We have a second to that motion. Okay. Moved by Mr. Deming and seconded by Mrs. Schmidt to approve the policy 903, review, revised policy 903, public participation in board meetings. Comments or questions for board members? Mrs. Yard. So this is the final approval, correct? Well, like all things, this is the final approval until, until we, <laughs> we make another change, right? right? Yes. Any student who work though. <laughs> this is the final one that you make another change to this policy. This has been one of the more well tilled fields in the policy book uh, concerning the items to come up in public participation. So any other comments or questions on this motion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Mm -hmm. We have to make, make note that there's going to be a, another policy meeting scheduled, but what's in today's meeting is not correct. No, it is correct. It is correct. Right. It is correct on yours. I don't know why it wasn't correct for activities. It is the 14th. The 14th it is. And policy is first. 
Are you okay with that? I don't think I have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, for yours is fine. I didn't right? have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dent. Moving on to the Upper Bucks County Technical School Committee. Uh, normally I ask Mrs. Schmidt, but uh, she was unable to attend the meeting, so I'm going to um, attempt to summarize what happened at the April 17th uh, Joint Operating Committee meeting. Uh, first of all, we did honor a student of the month. That happened to be Scott Lair. He's a diesel equipment technology program student from the Palisade School District. Um, even more, um, and I, maybe I should not say that, but I do think that this is an even greater honor for our students. Uh, we talked about, first of all, uh, 15 competitors from Upper Bucks County Technical School were in, uh, qualified to go to the state skill of the USA competition. And of those 15, 10 won medals, which I think is a fairly impressive number. Of the 10, um, as mentioned by Dr. Radigan, uh, one of our students and a total of four students uh, won the competition in Pennsylvania and therefore qualified to go to the national competition in Kansas City, Missouri. And those students competed either in the automated manufacturing technology team of which the Penridge student was, was uh, worked with two Quakertown students to uh, achieve that honor and the other student also from Quakertown uh, will compete in the employment application process. So um, this is taking a bit of a chunk of change out of the Votex budget. Fortunately, there is enough in that particular category because uh, the number of students who have qualified has continued to increase over the years, which I think is definitely a credit, again, to those who are, to the students who attend the vocational technical school and to the, the faculty and administration there. Um, we also talked about the Chapter 339 review, which it has to do with technical education. Fortunately, that team found no items that needed corrective action. That's always good news. There also was, a, during that visit, a surprise PDE audit on the cosmetology program, which also was passed without any findings or corrective actions. Um, we are now um, up to Plan Con Part D on the project that Mrs. Miller alluded to, the renovations of the VOTEC, um, having been approved by the board, and uh, discussions on Plan Con, Con Part F. Of course, the real uh, nitty-gritty comes when the state decides or decides not to reimburse the vocational school for the cost of these money. Currently, there's a, a moratorium on that. And it's much more crucial there even than here because the number is much larger in terms of the percentage that the uh, districts stand to regain uh, when, the, when or if, uh, hopefully when the state reimburses uh, as they are semi-obligated to do. Uh, we also talked about the fact that on April 30th this week, there will be 100 business and industry representatives at the VOTEC uh, doing uh, not the performance testing of our students. Last year, I believe the number that passed the not the tests was in the high 80s. Obviously, we'd like to see that go even higher. Um, it becomes more and more of a challenge, as the, much like No Child Left Behind, as you approach the, the um, uh, full competency. Uh, there also will be, in case anyone wants to call in, there will be a radio show hosted from the law enforcement lab on uh, May 4th, that's Sunday, uh, from 11 to 1. And this will, among other things, uh, be used to promote the 50th anniversary uh, celebration, which will officially occur on May 15th at the Vocational Technical School. So now knowing that it's 50 years old, that uh, I think gives even more impetus as to why it needs serious <coughs> renovation. Um, that at that May 15th, uh, night or day, uh, there will be a JOC meeting, but there will also be a, a formal groundbreaking ceremony. So we'll see if any of uh, the board members, Mrs. Schmidt, <laughs> Mrs. Miller, I can break a shovel or something else to, you know, break a foot, who knows. I but can the, jump on that shovel. <laughs> yes. So that, that's planned for the 15th of May. Um, the May 6th is when the renovation project bids are due, hopefully, uh, uh, Dewey and the bidders will have good news for us. Obviously, that's something that we'll wait and see. Uh, 
We are also commencing uh, work with a national technical honor society at the Votech. There are 52 students who potentially qualify for this, and we are uh, aided in that by Mr. Paul Lorenz, who is a graduate of the UBCTS and also uh, a resident of Percocy, a member of the Percocy Rotary Club, and they will be assisting in that project. Uh, the project at the Votech was discussed at length. It is scheduled for completion of, by December 2015, and if it not completed by then, there are damage charges uh, over it, for overages beyond that point. Um, there was an agreement reached with the association in terms of the days at the end of the year. Uh, in, in theory, the vocational technical school teachers will be in session until July 3rd. Obviously, that's not a very popular choice, probably even less popular than it would be with the students. Uh, but in any case, there has been an agreement on how to use uh, the time that is, is required by the contract in terms of that uh, issue. Uh, there also was issued a guidance plan um, by, spearheaded really by uh, Tracy Hill, who some of you know, she is a guidance counselor, was a guidance counselor here at the high school, now is a, in charge of the guidance area at uh, OTEC. Um, also, there is a comprehensive planning committee uh, at the vocational technical school like here. They're a, uh, the same phase school, and uh, we have approved the appointment of six teacher representatives, two parent representatives, two business representatives, four community representatives, two specialist representatives, and eight administrative representatives, and they include Mr. Dwight Anderson, the uh, current JOC chairperson, he's from Quakertown, and uh, Mrs. Cindy McCurdy, who is a former uh, JOC member from Palisades. And other than that, it was a fairly quiet evening, and that's the extent of the vocational technical school. Other than I will say, I am still <coughs> hoping that we will have a contract before the end of the year with our uh, negotiating staff. I say this sometimes more optimistically, sometimes less so. But we are really down, I believe, to one item, and we will be meeting on Friday again <laughs> in the hopes of getting that put in place. Uh, at this point, the next item is the Technology Committee. Mr. Thompson is not here. That committee will did meet on the 7th. I don't know if anyone has any comments that need to be made relative to the meeting. We don't have any motions. If not, the next committee meeting for that particular committee has not been scheduled. It will be scheduled as needed. And we will move to Act 48, Mrs. Schmidt. Thank you. Uh, Act 48 did not meet during the month of April. They are scheduled for their next meeting on May 15th at 4 p.m. right here in the district admin office. Thank you. Um, unfinished business. Board members have any unfinished business? Mr. Sarnese? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I have one item that actually uh, was discussed also at the uh, facilities finance meeting. And it, it, it's re with regard to a maintenance vehicle, uh, Barry, if you remember, that uh, Mr. Loeffler purchased. We approved back in February. However, due to um, problems with the dealer, right? Uh, they, there were problems with the paint or something. Like that. Delivery was a problem for a few weeks, turned into the paint being a problem, turned into the drying booth not working properly. They told us we should have the demo. Right, so what, what I would like is the board just to approve. Uh, they are giving us, in its place, for a little cheaper price, I believe, a... Um, it was a 2013 3500 versus a 2014 2500 and that's tonnage. Um, the, the demo had 1,000 miles on it and had a few more bells and whistles. So Kelly Blue Book actually had that vehicle worth more than the one we purchased. They're giving it to us co-star pricing for I believe seventy-two dollars cheaper, maybe seventy-seven. Right. It's we approved the price of thirty-eight thousand seven hundred and seventy-two dollars and sixty-five cents. They're giving it to us for thirty-eight thousand seven hundred dollars. So I would just like to get board approval for that. So you're making a motion to that effect? Yes. The motion would be uh, to. Authorized to accept the 2013 3500 GMC Sierra truck as a replacement for the previously approved CoStar's purchase of the 2014 Sierra 2500 HD. Okay. Thank you. 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 Th
Okay. I'll second for that. I second that. Uh, moved by Mr. Sarnese and seconded by Mr. Demo to uh, exchange trucks for a uh, slightly older but uh, uh, more valuable, perhaps, vehicle. Comments or questions from board members? Mr. Casper. Yeah, I, I, not completely sure, but I thought when we ran this by John, our former solicitor, that we did not have to vote again. But maybe we did. No, no, he we actually, no, that's why we, we brought it up. Yeah. We do. I'm reading his yes. letter. Yes. yes, he wants a motion for us to accept it. So I saw it on there too, and I didn't see any action. So okay, that was a good pickup then. That's all right, you, Mr. New Solicitor. No pun intended. Right. No pun intended. I think the board should should vote on it. Um, my question is how this new vehicle was priced. Um, okay. So it was Coast Star. All right. Fair enough. For those who and we approved that one. The, 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 and the, and the, original, the vehicle that, you, that you're not getting was also priced through CoStars. Yes. yes. Okay, fair. That's fine. Thank you. And for anyone who doesn't know what CoStars is, it's the state bidding process. Uh, any other comments or questions on the motion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Um, any other unfinished business? Okay, new business. The first new business uh, is a motion to approve the Penridge School District Special Education Plan. This will run from July 1, 2014 through June 30, 2017. Um, so I will make that a motion. Do we have a second? Silence. Second. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Miller. Moved by Dr. Yarnell, seconded by Mrs. Miller. Uh, Dr. Radigan, can you give us kind of a brief update <coughs> on this subject since it has not you know, appeared before? I don't, I don't think it's appeared before on the agenda. Okay, this is part of the comprehensive planning process which we're in right now. If you, you call your phase three district, and Penridge has to have their full plan completed by November 30th. That being said, there are two pieces of it, a professional development piece and a special ed piece that are subsets of it, and the special ed piece had to be approved in advance. Dr. Phillips had given a presentation on this. He had committee input, and it was approved by Dr. Yornell, myself, and it was on the website for 30 days for the community to review, and we're ready to vote on it. Did we get any response from the community that we know of? The last I heard from Dr. Phillips, he did not. Okay. That was about a week ago. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions for board members? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Also under new business, um, and this was a motion that went out this afternoon, and I apologize for the late um, breaking news, so to speak. <coughs> Um, I have been out of town since uh, Tuesday, so uh, I did not get to this item. Uh, we did have, and I want to thank all those who applied, we had, uh, I believe, 58 total uh, members of the community who applied to be part of the district's comprehensive planning steering committee. Um, and we included as, you know, the question of what part they would like to represent, either in business, community, or parents. Uh, some of the folks on this, uh, as I mentioned with the Votech, uh, are dictated in terms of the groups themselves. For instance, the teachers get to appoint people to participate in this. So the state has rules. The board needs to approve members, and I ask board members for comments. I appreciate the five board members who got back to me uh, with responses on um, potential appointees to this. So I'm making the motion that we approve the following people uh, for the Comprehensive Planning Steering Committee. And one important criteria is the first meeting is May 8th, and these people, I believe, I don't know whether Anita has all, all six people, have agreed to that. So the people that I'm recommending are for the, from the business community. Catherine Hope, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I apologize if I have not. I have Mark Horn. From the community, Amy Body and Lisa, Lisa Rogers, and parents, Joan Cullen and Jackie Faruda. I also have asked, uh, and since he's not here tonight to defend himself, but has agreed to do that, 
I've asked Mr. Thompson, who has been a major advocate of uh, comprehensive future planning, to participate in this committee as well. Although Dr. Uh, Radigan tells me that the board does not have a formal place in the sense that the state doesn't require that we participate at all. I also plan to attend that uh, March, sorry, May 8th meeting. So I would ask that we approve these six names and Mr. Thompson to participate in this committee. Do I have a second? Uh, moved by Dr. Yarnell, seconded by Mrs. Schmidt to approve members for the Comprehensive Planning Committee. Comments or questions for board members? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. I would also say to Mrs. Herring that I do not know the answer to your question. I do know that the, from the special needs point of view that we have the uh, special needs or special education uh, plan, and from the vocational side, we have the vocational side, including parents there as well. So I hope that we have covered all of those. The, are they all coordinated? There are cross participants, I believe, but I don't believe other than that they're coordinated. Thank you. Um, beyond that, are there, is there any other new business the board members want to have this done? Okay, if not, I will move to the announcements. There will be a special school board meeting, and it's scheduled for May 7, 2014, for the purpose of approving, approving the final budget and any other general business that may come up uh, at, before that time. It will be here, as far as I know, at 7.30, unless um, it, the notice goes out to change it, but the plan is to have it here. The next regular school board meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, May 28th, and note that that's a Wednesday, not a not in Monday as we usually have, that has to do with the, the how, where uh, the Memorial Day holiday falls. And it will also be at 7.30 here in the District Administration Office. There were executive sessions held on both April the 7th and April the 23rd, and they were for the purpose of personnel issues. Uh, at this point, comments or questions from guests? Same issue. I have a, a quick question. Oh, I'm sorry. Just, if you would, just a moment. That's the proposed final budget, right? Nice. Yeah, not the final. Budget. Proposed final budget. So it will be open, as I mentioned, open for public inspection for 30 days or more, but at least 30 days uh, after the board presumably passes it, whenever we pass it, but the presumption is to pass it on uh, this date, May 7th. Yes. Jay Camps with Siltown Township. Uh, with respect to the, um, my have, have times have changed. 30 years ago when I, have, when I graduated high school, uh, after serving four years on a lighting crew, never in my wildest dreams that I think it would be a paid position in the high school. But be that as it may, is it going to be a W-2 part-time employee or a 1099 contract employee? I cannot answer that question. Um, I'm sorry. It would be a W-2. Okay. This is Johnson who approves the money and says a W-2. Okay. I just hope that whatever amount that we build to, to rip these employees out, that we recover their payroll taxes as well. So it's not an expense to the taxpayers. Okay. Thank you for I don't. The other, uh, is that the way we do it currently? <coughs> Mrs. Johnson is saying yes, I believe, so hopefully that will continue. And the other point that I wanted to bring up about the, um, the bleacher bid. 1.475 million. Is that inclusive of uh, engineering fees for the Huey? Mr. Spadafora, can you answer that question? I would say no, but uh, no, we did not. Okay, so is there a set percentage on that dollar amount, or is there a cut fee? How does that work? Standard summer project fee. What, what is, is that? that? 6%. Okay, so we really didn't approve 1.475, we actually approved about 1.55, inclusive of 6% thing. Is Dewey's contract approved previously? Yes. Oh, yes. it was already approved, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Right, but, it's, but if it's based on the total cost of the project, that factors into what the fee would be. Tonight, all the district is doing is accepting the lowest responsible bidder that meets specs, right? For the major project. Right. So it, it's perfectly within its power to do that. Whether or not um, a particular person thinks that's good policy, 
that's a different question. And I think, re hold on, let me finish, please. I think reasonable board members maybe can disagree about whether that's good policy. But whether the process is lawful and whether the district as a body has the authority to do this, it seems to me that it does. So um, I've tried to keep quiet up here and, uh, you know, be somewhat deferential on my first night here. But it seems to me that um, the public and the board can have a, a robust debate about whether moving forward with the bleachers is good policy. Uh, it also seems to me quite apparent that the process uh, and the, the district's acceptance of what it believes to be the lowest responsible bid that meets specs is, is perfectly lawful. So I wanted to interject that. Okay, well that, that's not what I was, I was looking at just transparency on the total cost. And I appreciate that, and I'm looking at a different aspect. Well, you're looking at the legal of the aspect of, of the process. And as a taxpayer, I'm looking at the financial. Sure. There were also promises made. Anyone else? Wish to come? Mr. Rush. <laughs> Well, good evening, Lee Rush from Perkesy. I uh, had occasion after the last board meeting to meet one of the uh, board members and ask uh, that member if they recalled what I said at the end of the meeting. It was late. Uh, people get tired at the end of the night. So the board member uh, truthfully said, you know, I you don't remember. I was kind of tired. And you know, this happens a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to call you. <laughs> I do, I really appreciate that honestly, because I don't think it's the first time I've ever said anything that's not remembered. It happens a lot. So I came up tonight to speak again to my point. In the minutes, it says Mr. Rush urged all to be mindful of the decisions that need to be made for the school district. So I get the need for brevity and synthesizing one's comments in minutes, but I really want to make it clear that my concern uh, as a professional preventionist in drug prevention and counseling previously, uh, many years with kids who ended up in some trouble early on, is that the grades from six through eight, the middle school grades, are some of the most critical in one's life. And my comment that night had to do with our uh, counseling staff. And I think it's one of the most professional and commendable groups of people I've ever met in my career. And that said, they work hard. And I think that uh, years ago, interestingly enough, the same year that we built this turf field in 2008, and I'm pretty sure I have my facts straight, because I usually do my homework. But I think that was the year that we reduced the number of counselors from two in each middle school to one. And part of the reason was to make the FTE that was reduced into an instructional support person, which was helpful, because that was an academic support that I think we need. So I'm here tonight just to restate that my hope is that in the future, and probably the out year would be 15, 16, not next school year, to really have the same kind of discernment and discussion and priority around social and emotional health of middle schoolers as we do for so many other important projects. And uh, finally, I did send a letter to all the board members to invite you all, and the public is all 